Hey guys, welcome back uh, to another tutorial here. I'm actually going to be making a barrel this time. And so let me go ahead and make my... Oh, one second. There we go, let me make my folder structure. <clears throat> Max, you can see we've already collected some reference here. Uh, so let's go ahead and save that reference as well. Call this barrel. Barrel zero one. This would be barrel 2019-01. And uh, I have my crate in here because my barrel and my crate are going to be existing in the same world. And so I want them to be kind of similarly proportioned. So I'm just going to jump right in and turn my grid on. Oh, it's been a while. And I'm going to kind of start my blocking phase here for my high poly. So I want this uh, barrel to be rather big. So I think maybe something like that. Eighty. Mm, let's see what a. We don't mind the 64 and it's a nice uh, power of two and so I think I'm gonna run with that 64 maybe a height of oops, a height See what this looks like as a cylinder. Nope, 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 nope. I'm just wanting to see what the barrel looks like with some of its more proper proportions. Deformation. Hmm. There it is. I was looking for soft selection. Okay, so 
So I think I'm liking that size. I want to be a little more precise uh, with my measurements here. Cancel that. I'm actually just wanting to uh, duplicate this guy all together. Uh, change this to 24. I'm just trying to sort of guess how big I want that top. So that's a diameter of 48. Something like how would I do this real quick? Uh, I mean, I could probably get it exact, but I don't want to spend all this time counting it. Just count that first time: one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, sixteen, maybe thirty-two. All the way around is what I'm guessing. We have one, two, three, four, six of those bands. Six bands. Okay, something like that. I'm going to right click, convert to edible poly, and uh, I could do this a couple of ways to get this little bow in here, but I think I'm just going to do what I was doing before, I was liking the look I was getting. Um, I might spend a little time fidgeting with this uh, initial scale. my curve here loop there. I'm just going to have to do this manually. Kind of make my own curve. Uh, selection. Loop. And uh, I'm actually going to bring up Let's change our viewport layout here. I just went to uh, that little plus menu, configure viewports, layout, and I'm going to split it down the middle like this. Set this one to perspective. And I'm going to adjust my viewports here so that it matches with my reference plane because now it kind of, the viewport rotates <laughs> about the center of the viewport rather than the center of the viewport being over here. See how I did that. There, it makes navigation a little bit easier. You 
you get this little menu here by right clicking on your scale tool and I'm just kind of scaling this one by a number value it's a little easier for me Will be my original blocking. I'm going to keep one. Or you could say base mesh as well. Sort of my original blocking, original base mesh. I'm going to come back to that piece later probably. grab my swift loop I'm gonna add a couple of uh, edge loops in here this is something I should have done on my crate so uh, lay a few edge loops in first before splitting all the planks off and it would have saved some time in the end So I'm going to loop that ring. I'm going to do a split to make some all separate objects, just like we did on the crate. And I'm going to drop a shell on this. So they're pushing into each other. Hmm. See, the further I push this cage, the more they kind of collapse in on each other. That's not good. So, what we can do instead is I want to do this cleanly. I'm going to undo, let's go back to before I split this, so right about here, I just didn't undo, and I think I want to put that shell on, pick my value and because they're all one object it's going to extrude like it's one object, it's going to shell like it's one object value 2, how does that look? yeah maybe a value 2.5 there we go, I'm kind of liking that a lot better
but I'm gonna set it to 1.5 because that's probably about in my mind how thick these planks are and there's this little lip going on on the reference that I'm gonna address and so I think I'm gonna to get that thickness that 2.5 that I like I'm going to keep it at 1.5 right now and I'm gonna pull in that lip uh, here in a bit collapse that shell in uh, I want to make sure that my pivot point is centered, though it probably already is. Just double check. Center the object. Converge that old poly. I'm going to grab. front and back all the polygons I'm going to detach let's hide that soft selection roll out detach call this barrel plank let's do that again detach is a clone this time so we're not destroying this thing detach is a clone So let's go ahead and repair this because when I detached it from that shell, uh, it left this hole in the side of it. So I want to actually go back and repair these. So I'm going to loop all of those and we're going to do what's called a bridge, but you can't have, you can only go straight across uh, from polygon to polygon or edge to edge to create kind of a, uh, I don't know, like a bridge. <laughs> So what we're going to do is deselect these sort of ends so that it knows to how to bridge across. And uh, bridge. And then let's do the other side. Loop. Deselect that top edge. Deselect that bottom edge. Bridge. my curve but I think I can adjust that later a little easier so I'm just going to move forward with it doesn't cause problems. evenly do them both at the same time with the connect settings set to two 
Okay. I'm gonna deselect these and get rid of the two near the bottom. And I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab these edges. And I'm, I'm gonna do a normal constraints where I'm gonna push these vertices. I'm gonna move them based off of their normal. Uh, it's not looking like what I want. Hmm. Let's address that in a bit. I'll show you. I have another idea. But first, I need to copy this around. Huh. Mike's is gonna breeze and crash. Darn. Oh, there it goes. <laughs> So what I did, uh, right click on my settings here, my uh, sorry, my snap settings, and I'm going to go to home grid tab, nope, options tab, I'm going to change this to uh, angle, I'm going to change the angle snap to every one degree for the moment, I'll change this back when I'm done, but this should be enough to kind of, no, still not. So maybe if we go down to a 0.5 snapping. Really? How about a 0.25? Can't do 0.25. So let's try this instead. We're going to do an array, and that's a special tool for kind of cloning objects. And I'll show you what I mean. You can go, I believe it's under Tools, Array. And you need an object selected, and we're going to activate the Rotate. And I'm going to go ahead and hit Preview and see what happens here. Okay, there's a live preview. Fantastic. So I'm just gonna drag out my full 360 degrees because that's how I, I mean, that's how I know I want to array. I mean, I want to go a full 360 for this barrel. Uh, and then let's turn up the count. Thirty-two. There we go. I'm gonna hit OK. And there's one, because I did 32, there's a little bit of an overlap here. At least I thought there was. No? Should have been 32 sides to this, so 32 objects. Okay, there are, 32. So that was a little easier than the angle snaps. <laughs> Use the array. Something that array kind of does by default uh, is usually it instances them like this. So if I change one, they all change. And uh, that's kind of what I wanted, at least I think. <laughs> I'm gonna try uh, to get this sort of inside ring. Actually, I'm gonna do that. 
I'm actually going to line. See, I just rotated this by five degrees. And I'm going to grab this front. view and now the this plank because I rotated that whole barrel this one plank aligns with my y-axis and I'm just gonna pull it out so create that lip Maybe I could do a symmetry on this. Whoa. I mean, it works. <laughs> I'll put a, uh, a symmetry on these pieces so I got that same little lip on both sides now. did a little test subdivision it's a hot key of mine you guys would have to test with a uh, mesh smoother turbo smooth open subdiv I am liking what I have so far I just want to add a couple more connects in here So I'm kind of not liking the curve of this barrel and I want to adjust. there's a bit better of a curve.
pretty tight on those edges. And then let's go ahead and add those top ones. Kind of reinforcing So I'm planning the lid now. Uh, let's go ahead and I kind of like that some of these are just different sizes. They almost seem like they're different sizes. Got this really wide one here. I mean, maybe they're just the same color but I'm, I'm swearing these the lid for this plank is just like random chunks of wood and that's kind of cool I like that I think I'm gonna go with that idea and so watch me as I freehand this <laughs> in fact let's just do it with planes turn my grid on no
So I'm making another, well, maybe I can use, yeah, there we go. That's a good idea. I'm gonna borrow a face from this original barrel blocking. Not cloned element, no. Cloned object. watch what I do. I'm going to make a shape here that I'm going to use as a cutter. Could have made a tube. It's a primitive, but... enough. So I made a uh, cutting tool completely enclosed. Uh, let's see, hide the barrel. I want this isolated. And so to get this to work, I'm going to first attach these objects, these planes, attach them together, all the planes. And we're going to do something called a boolean, a boolean. <laughs> and uh, it doesn't really matter which object you start with. So we're going to go, I'm going to have the, the base here selected, click Sorry, wrong place. We're actually going to go to compound objects where it's standard primitives on the create panel. We're going to go to compound objects, do a boolean, and um, we're going to do a subtraction. And then we're going to add an operand and we're going to pick this outside shape here. And that kind of cut off all of that excess because it was overlapping. So we're subtracting one object from another. They have to be overlapping for this to work. And uh, you can actually invert. And uh, there's some settings in here that you could change. Um, but I did a Boolean for us. And to commit that, I want to go ahead and uh, convert that to edible poly. And I'm going to go in here and clean up uh, some of this. I might keep some of the extra edges like these here. I might keep. But some of this really small, I'm actually just going to do some control backspace on some of these. Connect a couple of these. a bunch of these end gons. Keep things clean, keep things clean. this Do 
duplicate that and keep this uh, with the shell in case I mess something up. Collapse. Now would probably be a good time to save. I'm going to do a save increment. You guys know how to do that. File, save as, save increment. Select all these top faces. I think I'm going to do an outline. I thought that would work. I guess I could change my pivot point method. Use selection center. And I'm just going to do a scale to get that sort of shaved edge look. Convert to edges. Deselect all these middle edges. I did a convert to edges for my polygons. Like if you're in polygons, you hold control. And you can control click on an edge and it'll convert your selection over. I think I showed you guys that, but I tend to repeat myself. Chamfer. So I'm gonna roll with that for a one on those outer edges here to kind of split it and help sell that effect and then I'm, I actually have to go in and clean this up maybe, maybe I want to add a vertex in here with the cut tool weld that down
If I try to inset this, it's going to do a bunch of weird nonsense. Um, I can't really connect across anything because they're all separate pieces, so I'm going to try something here where I do a slice plane. Slice plane, I don't want to have a selection on. I'll line it up where I want it. Get myself a sort of edge loop placed, and then if you hit slice, Oh, um, a quick no. That was right. Maybe I need to have a selection. You have to have a selection ready. Add an extra edge loop and I'm going to hit slice. And then turn the slice plane off. Selecting ring on all of these. Maybe I just go in and do some. Quick edge loops. With the swift loop. All kind of jumping back and forth between my show end result. kind of doing these individually you hit plus on your keyboard to go and add another set I can actually while in that mode use swift loop and drop in here and decide if that doesn't work for me I'll just use the swift loop instead I don't even have to leave that tool yet kind of cool feeling like I need an edge loop around that inside because it's these are really long faces and they're pulling from both directions so to address that I might select all these middle edges and this won't be the prettiest way to do it but it'll get the job done pretty fast fast enough to get me my result. So if I set it to three maybe, and then do a push outward, you see I'm getting these kind of weird edge loops in here. I 
too weird, I guess. Center that pivot point to object. Okay, I'm feeling like that's too tight. Hmm. I think it's worth spending the time to go in here and kind of pull some edge loops back. I'm going to do a swift loop. Drop an orthographic so that the viewport's not jumping around so much. I'm just gonna kind of go in and control click on some of these loops and slide them back just a little. Now, I'm not talking a lot through this, um, but this isn't really a step-for-step -step tutorial. It's just to kind of give you some insight into how I would approach this asset. I believe I was a little more thorough with the box. Uh, I'm sorry, the crate. <laughs> Convert that selection. I kind of want to fix these corners. They're a little pinched. Uh, edge constraints, and I'm going to slide them. Maybe not that far.
gross looking. It's not the best lid. I'm too lazy to address it. Those little kind of pinches on that last panel. Duplicate this lid. Or rather than duplicate it, I could put a symmetry on it. Let's do that. First things first, I actually have to move my pivot point maybe to the align to this guy so it's in the middle. So that when I apply my symmetry modifier. Z-axis flips right over for me. So with this original barrel, I'm actually going to make a couple of bands here. Uh, really thin. As clone, call this bands. So I am going to split these and then I'm going to shift drag that edge out and what that'll do is it'll give me, it'll make it look like a little ribbon, I'll show you what I mean, shell this. Now I have that little edge on that band sticking out like it was cut and wrapped around.
copy that symmetry modifier. Oh, I guess I'll put its own on there. going to be a triangle that I add in here, but that's okay. It's not too many. I'm thinking I want to collapse that point. shapes. Ugh. Gotta figure out how to select those inside lines, so let's see. Grab those back polygons, convert my selection, deselect those vertices, slide it back. On this shell, I'm going to add some segments to it to hold just one segment to kind of hold that crisp shape, that edge. I want to hold that edge on the inside. See, so shell has some built-in edge segments. Maybe I'll even do two. A little bit thicker is kind of the advantage of having some modifiers on the stack.
Magical Sphere for the Rivet. And I'm going to scale it flat. pivot point to my barrel. smooth off. I'll do a right above symmetry. Uh, I'm going to add a modifier that is a edit poly modifier. And it's kind of like a edible poly base within a modifier. And so I could move some things around if I wanted and then turn it on and off. I try not to do any modeling in here. Uh, I don't really want to get into why, but uh, it can be dangerous. <laughs> I think all I want to do is do some rotation individually. I might add, and this is kind of dangerous too, but I'm actually going to add these rivets. And now I can kind of turn it on and off. I'm going to add one more edit poly modifier. Now on this one, I'm going to rotate. Hmm. Rotate based on the world. Really? Making some duplicates here.
And one last detail. I'm not going to worry about the hole. Actually make it look cut in. That's something you could do in sort of a texture stage, honestly. Paper modifier. <clears throat> no height segments. I think that's about it. I'm calling it done. Hope you were able to pick something up from that. I'm gonna go ahead and save increment. Let's do a little comparison next to my crate. And so they're the same size, which is kind of cool. They're both, uh, I believe, an equal 96 units tall. Okay, thanks for watching guys.